All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got the new update for version nine. Navigate on autopilot is here. Gonna test it out, take it for a quick spin and give some initial first impressions. First, we go to autopilot, we enable. Navigate on autopilot beta. Gives you the disclaimer where you can press yes. I'll press yes, you can't see it through the camera, but I press yes. And then we can also customize Navigate on autopilot to see how aggressive we want this to be. There's the disabled, there's mild, there's average, and there's Mad Max. We're gonna try Mad Max just for a first go round. Uh, we'll get it on the road and uh, and test it out. All right, so to, to start the navigation, we'll set a navigation route. As it comes up, we are prompted. We are prompted with the navigate on autopilot. So I can click navigate on autopilot. Then I have to actually activate autopilot. So I'll do that now. And I see the blue lines there. Uh, I see the blue lines. It's going to confirm lane change in which case I'll turn my turn signal on and it will actually acknowledge that and turn the, light, the uh, turn signal off. That's pretty good. That's pretty awesome. One of the things I noticed with the turn signal is that it doesn't actually actuate the turn signal the way that it normally does. It does it more aligned more align with what, uh, what the Model 3 does where you turn it just a little bit, you hit the turn signal just a little bit like you would signal for a quick turn or a quick lane change, uh, but it doesn't click all the way down and it actually takes it from there. It keeps the turn signal on and turns it off automatically. So in that regard, it kind of behaves similar to the Model 3 uh, turn signal. It doesn't actually require you to click it all the way in and then for it to click back. Again, confirming the lane change here, trying to find the, the fastest route. That's pretty awesome allows you to confirm and then automatically takes over. So this is great, this is really smooth. Obviously the new advances to autopilot are great in terms of how it performs. It's really smooth, really elegant. Again, this is taking a step further to full self-driving. And that's where this particular view in the, in the instrument cluster comes into play for having this high, this wide view. And again, for navigate on autopilot and full self-driving, this view is great because it shows you a lot of things, uh, even though we know that it doesn't show the cars in the other lanes. I'll turn the volume down here. Even though it doesn't show you the, uh, the cars in the other lanes that it's visualizing, it only shows you the cars to the left and right of the current lane you're in, including the cars in the same lane you're in. Uh, it's still a good view from here for full self driving in this now navigate on autopilot feature. If you're not doing that, if you're doing regular autopilot or just driving around, I think they should still revert back to the regular zoom level. But so far, so good. This is great. Definitely uh, prompts you for the lane you should be in. Now I should be in these three these three lanes here, so that's pretty good. Uh, wish the lines would also be blue just as a further indication. So the lane line in front of the car shows the path that the car is going to follow, but I still want the lane to be blue to give me some reassurance that, hey, I'm on autopilot, this is what it's doing right now. Uh, the lanes being gray seem to indicate that. I can confirm the lane change. I'm gonna have it in Mad Max mode, so it's gonna be a little bit more aggressive. And it is aggressive, wow, look at that. It is aggressive, got in there. But I'd like the, uh, the lines to be blue, indicating the lane that I'm in, indicating that I'm on autopilot and on navigate on autopilot. Them all being gray seems to indicate a, a lane that I'm going to go in or potentially go in. I think they should make the lane blue. Again, now just actuating the turn signal with the quick pull of the turn stalk, not a full click of the turn stalk. Activates it, the navigator on autopilot takes it from there, keeps it on beyond the typical three blinks that the quick turn stalk pull will give you. But this is pretty good. I'm liking it so far. Really liking it so far. I'm just going 10 miles above the speed limit here. Uh, and it's going to advise based on the speed of the cars in front of me. So that's great. So it keeps me at the speed that I want to be at. If I increase the speed, which I'm not gonna do right now, uh, it will adjust accordingly and move around cars accordingly. So this is really, really awesome. Way to go Tesla on this. Again, I have my one hand on the wheel. The method I showed in videos before, how to keep autopilot under control and not 
allow it to uh, freak out because your hands aren't on the wheel. It's in a comfortable position, still allowing me to look around and be comfortable. It's not a tight grip on the wheel, just resting on the bottom of the wheel, just preparing to take over. Again, this is beta after all, and this is new, so we don't know how it's gonna react on all roads, neither does Tesla. So again, it's asking me to confirm a lane change. Quick turn on the stalk. If I fully click on it now, let's see what happens. It tells me that there's a blind spot warning here. It clicks over, and now I'm in the lane but now what because I clicked it it's still on the turn signal stays on so I definitely need to it's best practice now to um, quick turn on the on the turn signal to change lanes and navigate on autopilot if you do the full turn signal where you click the actual turn stalk you have to then manually turn it off so a quick turn on the turn stalk again similar to model 3 model 3's turn stalk is different so it doesn't actually click it just actuates the turn signal and then it turns off, so it's it's pretty uh pretty okay in that regard. But for Model S and X, the uh, the turn stock does click. So this is great. This is really really exciting right now. Just because we're on the forefront, Tesla's on the forefront. No other car manufacturer or car company is doing this. We are on the forefront, putting this software, putting these features, putting this functionality in the hands of hundreds of thousands of users all at once. This is amazing. Okay, now it tells me, it indicates the, the gray line where I need to be. I'm going to indicate, again, quick pull on the turnstock. The car will take care of the rest. It's going to get me over into the right lane. And now comes the real test because we're coming up on the actual exit that we need to get off on. So this is going to be the real test to understand how it performs. And I know this turn very well, which is why I selected this route. So how it handles this particular exit is going to be particularly interesting. So let's see what it does. is coming up and it's going to be a pretty sharp turn so I'm, I'm curious to know what happens when uh when i get off this particular highway what happens what does the car do what does it prompt me to do again i'm going 65 here it's going to ask me to, to take the exit coming up right around this corner and let's see if i can actually take this exit wow the car turned the turn signal on by itself and got into the lane by itself now it tells me that, wow, the transfer of control from navigate on autopilot to human interaction. Wow, wow. And then it reverts to regular autopilot, which I could let it take this turn. I could take it, let it take this turn. Okay, let's see what happens. It's a pretty steep turn, but wow. Wow, that was awesome. This is a little bit different because it's gonna require me to yield, so I'm gonna disengage here and stop because it has me to stop. Wow, that was impressive. That was impressive. Wow, it disengaged, it handed over control, again, moving more to up the ladder of autonomous driving where it can actually pass me control of the car to then resume, resume functioning the car, driving the car by myself, or in this instance, it actually reverted to regular autopilot, which is pretty cool. Um, probably they should put an additional warning, prepare to take over. Uh, I think that would be helpful because if I didn't know any better, I, I would think that it's still on autopilot, so I'm going to let it go. And maybe if I'm not familiar with that turn, uh, I might be in a little bit of trouble. But other than that, that was amazing. We're going to do another pass, try it again on the, on the other route. Okay, getting ready to go to the return route and see what that experience is like. Just to reiterate, as I got off the exit, the, act, the car actually turned lanes and turned the turn signal on automatically. I didn't have to confirm it. I didn't have to use the stalk, it did it automatically. Turned inside of the exit lane, got comfortable, gave me a countdown in terms of a timer in which, uh, in which it was going to pass back control or to end effectively end navigate on autopilot. And then when that timer uh, elapsed, it then reverted to regular autopilot and effectively handed me the control back. So that was pretty awesome. Pretty awesome, pretty amazing. Again, stepping up the ladder, uh, getting closer to full self-driving and full autonomy, this is amazing. I'm gonna speed up here a little bit, get to speed, and then I'll activate, I can activate autopilot now actually, in this lane and see what happens. 
Again, just doing a 10 mile an, over, mile an hour over difference per my settings. Autopilot is very smooth, very composed. I have it in Mad Max uh, lane changing mode for navigate on autopilot. And it does require you to use a turn signal to make the suggested or recommended lane change based on speed, speed-based lane changes. But then when it actually gets to the, to the actual turn, it actually takes over for you and doesn't ask you for acknowledgement. Then counts down to when it's gonna pass you back control. That's pretty great. Again, my only recommendation here is put a warning to let the, the driver know that they should be prepared to take over once you pass back control for navigating on autopilot ending on an exit, on an exit. So other than that, this is, this is amazing. This is truly amazing. And now I have navigate on autopilot on. So navigate on autopilot is now on. I had it off the whole time, didn't realize that. Now it's on. A different chime for navigate on autopilot, again on the return trip. It's gonna make these speed-based lane changes requiring me to turn the turn signal and use the quick turn turn signal. It'll take care of the rest for me as well as turn it off. Again, using Model X and Model S, if you're using the Navigate on Autopilot, don't fully uh, uh, turn the turn signal. Don't do it till it clicks. Do the quick turn signal pull where it doesn't click and the car will take care of the rest. All right, this is great. This is the return trip now. Trying a different direction, different road, different conditions. Seeing what happens. Confirm lane change, I'll confirm it again. It's gonna sneak in here. This is great. Now this one, I'm, gonna, I'm going to let my hands off the wheel right now to see what happens. I'll let my hands off the wheel, see if it asks me to hold the wheel. Because right now, only thing I, I've been holding the wheel, but only thing that's been asking me is to confirm the lane change. It's not asking me to hold the wheel. So I'm keeping my hands off now to effectively test out the tolerance there we go, here's the light force. Okay, so I'll keep my hand on the wheel. Still the same there, no difference there. Again, Tesla trying to be extra cautious and vigilant in rolling this out, understandably so. So I got one hand resting on the wheel while it continues to go forward. This is great. Again, blue lines. I want the blue lines in the lane I'm in. I want to really understand that I'm in autopilot or more specifically that when it changes from navigating on autopilot and goes back to regular uh, autopilot that I understand that through the visuals. Right now the visuals are not, not all that clear. I'm going to speed up just a bit just because a lot of people are piling up behind me I'm trying to pass. I'll speed up just a bit. just so I can get around these guys and then uh, I'll go back down to my targeted speed. I'll actually make my own lane change. And uh, it's gonna make it for me. Now this one I actually did the full turn stock just like I normally do for uh, autopilot lane change. Okay, so Navigate on Autopilot is here. This is the 2018 42.2 build. Testing Navigate on Autopilot for the first time. We did one pass already. This is the return trip or the return pass on a different road, different direction. Again, testing it out. Auto Navigate on Autopilot is on Mad Max mode it's in terms of the settings. I have one hand resting on the wheel to, to keep uh, Autopilot in compliance and happy otherwise i'm really relaxed enjoying the ride it's very smooth makes those speed based lane change recommendations that require me to hit the turn signal and again model s and model x i have to just tap the turn signal the quick turn signal pull not the full turn signal pull otherwise uh, you'll have to turn it off manually and uh, otherwise this is great uh, toll roads is where i always question where full self-driving is gonna go and full autonomy, how are cars gonna to handle toll roads, 
Uh, here on the East Coast, we have Easy Pass. How are they gonna deal with that? How are they gonna deal with toll lanes where it sort of breaks off into multiple lanes, sometimes 20 different lanes uh, with no clear, clear path to those lanes. So it's become sort of a free-for-all. Asking me to confirm, confirm with the turnstock. Car makes the change by itself. That's great. Again, being consistent with the UI, I would like the dot, the, the lane lines to be dashed to indicate a lane change, similar to the way they do it on autopilot, just so it's crystal clear and consistent, so that when you make a lane change on autopilot, it's the same as making a lane change on Navigate on autopilot in terms of the UI, just consistencies here. And again, blue lines to the left and right of the lane that I'm in. Okay. Okay, so it's telling me the lane I should be in. It's gonna make that recommendation in just a second. Blind spot detection in place, but I will tap the turn signal to indicate. And as soon as it's clear, it should go. Okay, it's clear and it's going. Okay, so now we're gonna come up against a toll. And here again is where I think I wanna see how this reacts. I wanna see how this reacts because I don't know that anyone has really thought about toll roads and maybe they don't exist uh, very frequently any other place, but in the uh, mid-Atlantic, northeast region, they are abundant. And I'm curious to know how Navigator Autopilot is going to deal with this. I'm gonna let it keep going. Slowing down for some reason at 55 miles an hour. Cars are passing me like crazy behind me. I don't want this to get dangerous. There is a path. It's not giving me any warnings. It's slowing down to 35, so it doesn't really know what to do. I am going to disengage because it doesn't know what to do. It's making a lane change. Now it's asking me to take over. Okay, so it does not know how to handle tolls as expected. So I'm gonna pass this toll, and once I pass this toll, then I'm going to uh, to resume. But it didn't know what to do. It slowed down almost to, you know, to, to crawling speeds, to 25 miles an hour, because it actually didn't know what to do. And now once the lanes resume here on the road, uh, I can resume as well. So I'm gonna get over a little bit just so it can show me how to, I know where it's gonna go. I know the path it's gonna go. So I wanted to see if it makes the recommendation based on that, telling me the lane I should be in. So now I'm gonna resume now. It's resuming, trying to complete maneuver. Confirm lane change, I'm gonna confirm it. Okay, it's trying to make this maneuver really quickly. It's two lanes it has to get over. Let's see if it does it by itself. It's confirming again, it's slowing down. Wow, slowing down, great. 400 feet, wow, wow. Look at that, passing me control again. Again, now it resumes on autopilot. It's not telling me to take over though. It should tell me to take over or be prepared to take over because we're coming towards a stop sign and that's, wow. Whoa, it's coming to a stop. It reads the stop sign. And now I can resume, wow. Okay, I'm resuming on a regular road. I've, I've not done this before. Okay, now it's telling me to take over. All right, I'll take over, wow. That was pretty impressive. That was pretty impressive. Wow. Tesla, you're sneaky. You're sneaky. You're telling us it's navigate on autopilot, but it's much, much more with this version nine. You're holding out on us. You've got some more, some more tricks up your sleeve. This actually read the stop sign and stopped for me. Didn't allow me to resume until I resumed on the, uh, with the pedal. Wow. Very impressive. Very impressive. It could have read the stop sign or it could have, it could have just uh, read that this particular road ended the uh, the proper highway road and it, need, it, res it resumed on uh, public streets. It could have just indicated that, they could have just saw that it was a regular street and not the highway and discontinued. But wow, that was impressive. Kudos to Tesla for that. Looking forward to further updates with this software. That was phenomenal. Congrats, Tesla.